So the world of beauty and the world of fashion have always kind of been interconnected. Now in the case of Rihanna, I have been very critical in the past when it comes to her fashion brand. That being said, of course, like most people, I'm a huge fan of Rihanna, I love her music. I think she's an amazing businesswoman and that's why she's, I think she's the richest female musician of all time. So that just shows you how much of a business mogul she is. I think she's extremely stylish and she does influence a lot of people when it comes to style. And there's many more things I could say um, about Rihanna. I think people just fail to realize that I, because I want to be a journalist, I have to be critical constructively. So I can constructively say that I personally don't think Fenty, the fashion brand, was groundbreaking without like being a Rihanna hater or all the other stuff that people have called me in the past. But before I continue, you can follow me on Instagram at Fashion Roadman for all your daily fashion content and news. And if you want to support the channel financially, I have a Patreon and the link to that is in the description below. And I really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to my Patreon. So for many, many years, Rihanna has been very outspoken on the difficulties of many different women of many different color shades and skin shades and skin tones when it comes to buying the correct and the right beauty products for them. And in 2017, we saw Rihanna take matters into her own hands and in september 2017 she launched the fenty beauty line in collaboration with lvmh the massive conglomerate and why i think this was a smart move is because of course lvmh is an enormous company that has amazing infrastructure from logistics to factories to testing they have everything at their disposal so her coming together with lvmh is amazing because i don't think what she achieved with the brand she could have achieved alone because she just does not have the infrastructure of a multi-billion dollar company like lvmh the first release of fenty beauty included 40 different shades of foundation which was way ahead of what was being shown and what was being sold around the time when Fenty Beauty launched. So I was looking at some statistics on Forbes earlier, and it said that Fenty Beauty made $100 million in sales in its first few weeks. By the end of 2018, Fenty Beauty generated an estimated $570 million in revenue after only 15 months in business, which is insane. And they said as of 2019, Fenty Beauty was worth an estimated 3 billion, with LVMH owning 50% and Rihanna owning 15%. So Rihanna is rich, like 15% of, she owns 15% of Fenty Beauty, which is worth 3 billion. And Fenty Beauty is not like the only thing she does. Um, that's, that's insane. And of course, all these numbers that I've told you about does cement and prove the success of Fenty Beauty. But I think what's really important for me to discuss in this video is the why and the how a few years ago to be very honest with you when it came to beauty products not many people's needs were catered for it literally seems like yesterday when a lot of my dark skin family members could not find the right shade of foundation on their skin and it just made them not really want to take part in the beauty industry or do makeup because they're like i can never do good makeup brands that make my shade, it's always like 10 shades too light and stuff like that. That literally seems like it was just yesterday that that was the reality of the beauty industry. And in the rare case and rare occasion that a brand did do a really dark shade or just different shades for different skin tones, they would be so expensive that most people wouldn't be able to afford it in the first place and then when people could afford it it still wasn't good because the dark the darkest shades that the beauty brands used to do um, a few years ago were kind of an afterthought so they weren't developed well so even though yes they were the right shades on the skin they would look a bit cakey and they wouldn't look nice on the skin and this of course was a huge issue that seeped into the fashion industry because when we talk about the modeling industry every single black model i know has personal experiences and accounts of times, many times where makeup artists just don't even know how to work with skin that isn't even white, which to me makes no sense because if you're a professional makeup artist, like if your full-time job is to do makeup, to me, not being able to do makeup on various shades of skin makes you mediocre. I don't even know how you can call yourself a professional if you can't even do makeup on different skin. It's ridiculous. It's like 
if a photographer who calls himself a professional can't take images in different settings, they can't take good images in low light setups or well lit setups or even over lit setups. You would call that, people look at those type of photographers as amateurs. Um, no one would hire that type of photographer. But for some reason, when it comes to the beauty industry and modeling, makeup artists get away with being so mediocre that they can't even do makeup on various skin tones. And that's all their job. That's literally their full-time job, just to do makeup. And sometimes some makeup artists would go as far to not even bring any skin tones that aren't white. And so any foundation shades or any concealers that weren't for white people, which means they're basically saying that I don't really do makeup for anyone that isn't white and I don't really care to, so I'm not gonna bring any products that are for any non-white models, which is just insane. And that's just me talking about the mediocre makeup artists that can't even do makeup for various shades. There are makeup artists who are really good at what they do and they can do makeup on different women, from Asian women to white women to black women, all different types of women, right? But they didn't even have the right products at their disposal because the products on the market were so bad anyway that even when they could do it, the makeup still wouldn't look as good as other models just because of the range of products that are available on the market. I personally have had these sort of experiences as well. I don't use makeup, but when I have had like TV appearances, they normally put a bit of foundation just to make your skin look more smooth. And every single time I've gone on a TV show or done any TV appearance, I look like an absolute ghost because they never have just the right powder shade and the right foundation to put on my face that will actually not make me look like Casper. And of course, just think of black beauty editors and I've read many stories where black beauty editors that work for magazines will go to these beauty events where the black beauty editors are supposed to test these products and they're not even made right for their skin tones. Most of them are just made for a certain narrow range of skin tones. And it got so embarrassing for some of these beauty editors, especially the black ones or the darker skin, because it's not only black people that are dark skin, there are Asians that are dark skin, like Indians. Some Indians have very dark skin, so they have the exact same problems. It's not just black people, whereby they wouldn't be able to test these foundations on their face because it would make them look so ridiculous that they would just be testing it just for the sake of feeling the texture and being able to at least go back to their magazine and their publication, at least be able to write about the texture. And I think all of these factors played a part in, in a very narrow-minded beauty standard that we all have. And it just created a really stressful and depressing relationship between a lot of women and the beauty industry in general. There are many times you would hear a lot of CEOs at these beauty companies give excuses like black um, shades don't sell, darker shades don't sell, so that's why we don't make it, which is actually insane. And I think a lot of companies, they underestimate the buying power of certain demographics. Just in the USA alone, there are 40 million black people and worldwide, of course, there are billions of black people and if we go past the black discussion going back to like people of different shades how many brown people there are in the world like pakistani indian arab black like all these different people that these brands weren't kind of marketing towards have a huge collectively have an enormous spending power and i think a lot of these brands overlooked it it really reminds me of anna winter at vogue and how a lot of times you hear these people say things like um, when they put a black model on the cover, it doesn't work well and it doesn't sell. And I think to me, what they're indirectly saying, because it's not that it doesn't sell, um, because once again, I've told you that these people have a massive buying power. And we will see this as I get more into the stats of Fenty and who the demographic and who the people that are actually buying Fenty are. Um, so clearly these people have the spending power. It's either you're not marketing it well enough or you're just being negligent and you just don't want to even bother to be inclusive anyway. So your excuse is just, oh, it doesn't sell when you haven't even tried it out, which is what a lot of brands do anyway. And this of course is where the influence of the Fenty Beauty brand shone really bright. To me, the marketing of Fenty Beauty was really tactical and Rihanna was spreading this message of it being the beauty brand for everyone. I remember around the time just before she released her Fenty Beauty brand and she was kind of doing the rounds in terms of giving interviews about what Fenty is. She was always talking about inclusivity and how 
inclusivity shouldn't be a thing where we're like, oh, let's be more inclusive, like it's some fun thing. It's kind of something that should just happen by default. And something that should just happen, that, that should just be the norm. Like inclusivity should be the norm. The slogan for Fenty Beauty was actually beauty for all. And of course this encapsulates everyone. And it's basically saying that this brand is going to cater towards every single person and no one will be left out in terms of the Fenty Beauty line. When it came to the messaging of Fenty Beauty, they didn't actually use buzzwords like inclusivity, diversity, and never really used those words. They just kept the beauty for all message, which seemed very genuine. And of course, Rihanna obviously cared about um, her brand catering to many different people because she has had first-hand experiences of being makeup artists using the wrong shades on her face and those type of things. And even Rihanna is not that dark skinned. So imagine Rihanna had those issues. Imagine the issues that really, really dark skinned women had. And of course this messaging was passed across in many different ways in the marketing. I remember there was a huge campaign that featured models of so many different shades or, and it kind of looked like a mood board. And that was insane and that, that went really viral. To quote a Forbes journalist when talking about Fenty Beauty, what she said was, it challenged the standard convention that you only needed a very defined set of shades to satisfy the market. And that is very true. And going back to the stats, the, I think the statistic that really intrigued me the most is that black and Latina shoppers make up Fenty's biggest demographic along with a solid base of Asian consumers and the white women actually are the smallest demographic of people that buy Fenty Beauty, which is insane because like I said, I think brands underestimate the buying power of kind of non-white consumers. And ultimately we're in the West, so obviously cater to um, white consumers. White consumers are um, the majority, especially in Western countries. So obviously you have to cater to white people like I don't understand why anyone wouldn't, um, but neglecting everyone else in the pursuit of just catering to a very narrow set of people doesn't make much sense if you're a global brand and you're trying to grow as much as possible and you're trying to be this massive global brand because if we're talking worldwide, then worldwide, um, everyone isn't white, are they? And I feel like because of the way Fenty BC was marketed, every single person who felt like they could never find their foundation shade, finding the right concealer shade for them was a mission every time they had to go to many different malls just to find one product that would fit them. They really felt like finally there was a brand for them. And this is why I think Fenty Beauty was so successful commercially and why so many people bought into it. And most celebrities, when they make products, especially beauty products, because so many celebrities have beauty lines right now, they make some of the most garbage products I've ever seen in my life and they just slap their name on it. And by virtue of their name being associated with the product, it sells a lot and it sells out and they make millions. But this is one case where I don't like people calling Fenty Beauty a celebrity line or a influencer line because once again, Rihanna is an amazing businesswoman and this is one of those situations where she has made a very, very, very successful business. And she just happens to be a celebrity, but it's not a celebrity brand. It's not her taking her name, slapping it on a product and then selling it and the brand being known because of Rihanna's name. Yes, her name and it being called Fenty is a factor, but I think the bigger influence was it catering to so many people and it actually did change the industry in that respect. And it should be respected. I think Fenty Beauty should be respected on the same level with any other established beauty line. It's also very well documented that Rihanna was heavily involved in the production and testing process. And I'll leave something that Rihanna said on the screen where she was talking about how during the process she was really frustrated because she would get samples that were just really terrible. And they had to work hard on the samples over and over again to get the right products. And in many statements when she was explaining what she meant by this is that, and I think I touched on this earlier where, just because you make a foundation shade for someone darker doesn't mean it will look good. You still have to do different testing because darker people have different skin textures to people with fairer skin. And that's why if you take a foundation product, let's say, of someone for fairer skin and you just make it darker and put it on someone with darker skin, it might look good on the fairer skin person, but on the darker skin person, 
it'll be really cakey and splodgy and not look nice because the skin composition is different. It's not just the shade. There's factors like melanin that go into making the shade different. So the chemical composition of the foundation shade has to be different other than just making the pigmentation darker of the foundation shade. And this is the kind of deep testing that Rihanna and her team, of course, were doing to make sure that it wasn't just one of those brands that just slapped different shades and not considering how the undertones would look and many different um, deeper factors. And in the future release, Fenty Beauty and Rihanna even one up themselves. And they had more releases that featured 50 different foundation and concealer shades, which of course was more than the initial release of 40 shades. They constantly developed their products and they're constantly working and improving on their line. And of course, there's still many quack makeup artists in the fashion industry that still do not know how to work with many different shades. I don't see why they even have jobs if you can't even work with many different shades. Like, how can you be a professional <laughs> and you can't even work with different shades and you call yourself a professional makeup artist? Um, there's many of those that are still around in the fashion industry, but at least now because of what is termed as the Fenty effect, and the Fenty effect is basically this phenomenon that when Fenty Beauty released their line, all of a sudden, all these different brands suddenly uh, decided that they care about inclusivity and started, everyone now has a 40 different shade foundation um, range when that was not the norm before Fenty Beauty. And because of the impact that Fenty Beauty had and because so many beauty brands were like, oh my God, wow, there are a lot of black people and Asians and Arabs that have a lot of money that would actually buy into this stuff. So let's cater to them and make more shade. The impact that Fenty has had has meant that even now at cheaper price points, there are brands that are making um, foundations and concealers and different things from many different skin tones. And that means that now makeup artists that work in fashion have more skin tones at their disposal to work with. And that means that though they're still not good at their job because a lot of them can't work with different skin tones, but at least they can kind of try and do a better job than they could in the past. And the people who were good at doing makeup for different skin tones now just have a wider range of products at their disposal, which means they can do an even better job. But I won't excuse the quack makeup artists only because there are still makeup artists who don't even care to bring the right, to bring different shades in the first place. Um, so there's that. And like I stated earlier, a lot of the success of Fenty Beauty can be attributed to the amazing and tactical marketing. And I feel like Fenty Beauty is always on the cutting edge of marketing. And if we think of what social media platform is growing the fastest right now, it would be TikTok. And whilst I know some people think TikTok is cringy, some people think TikTok is for really young people. I personally am not on TikTok. I don't really consume TikTok. I don't really know what's going on on TikTok. That being said, you can't deny the impact of TikTok and the massive influence that TikTok has. And it's literally just recently we saw Adi Saman embrace the TikTok culture and the TikTok scene in his latest fashion runway show for Celine. And Fenty Beauty have also used TikTok to spread their message of inclusivity and diversity. And if you look at the Fenty Beauty TikTok page, which I looked at before making this video, of course, um, I was just curious. Um, you actually, they invite a lot of diverse influencers um, to give makeup tutorials on TikTok and to do TikTok challenges, which of course means that they're going to appeal to a younger demographic and a younger audience, which a lot of brands neglect, but at the end of the day, last week I was reading an article on Women's Wear Daily and they were talking about how business is going to be run in 2026. And they were saying how in 2026, most of the buying power will be Gen Z and millennials. So brands really have to work hard on catching a younger demographic now so that when they have the most buying power, it will be your brand that they're spending their buying power on. So it's very important to be on these platforms that the younger demographic are on. Now, I personally um, haven't used many Fenty Beauty products. Like I said, I haven't, um, like I said, I'm not someone that does makeup. I don't really do makeup on my face or whatever. I use beauty products like skincare stuff, but I don't use makeup. I'm just kind of like an aspiring journalist that likes to look at case studies and I've looked at Fenty Beauty as a case study, but I was really curious on user experience and how some people feel about using Fenty Beauty from a user experience standpoint. So I asked a few people to give their opinions and I will basically show you their opinions. 
For me, I feel like Fenty Beauty has really revolutionized the makeup game. I feel like before Fenty even came out, there were maybe five shades for black women, especially darker skinned black women. They were not included by these makeup brands and Fenty brought that and they really changed the game. I think they're leading by example and I personally enjoy the products that I've used. I feel like they're amazing quality. So honestly, ups to Fenty. Hi, um, so I, I'm not really much of a makeup person, but when I do wear makeup, I like it to look as natural as possible because I don't like to look all caked up and stuff. So whereas before I was using like different brands for my foundation, for my eyebrows, for my concealers, anything, um, as I started getting more into makeup and like how I want myself to look, I decided that I was actually going to try Fenty Beauty and plus because I have other black and brown friends that have also used like their foundations and stuff like that um, and I'd heard really good good reviews from them I was like I might as well give it a try so I um, started using their one of their eyebrow pencils I'm not too sure what it's called but I used to use one of their eyebrow pencils and I really loved it because it made my eyebrows look so natural I didn't really ever have to put too much product on them I could outline my eyebrows and they would be fine like because um, I don't like to look too caked up and that was the same thing with my foundation as well with foundation I like to look like really dewy and like just look how like my normal skin looks and like the coverage of the foundation is really good like i don't have to use too much of it i can literally squeeze like one pump on my hand and that will cover the whole of my face and then on top of that it doesn't even make me look like i'm wearing makeup because it's just so like lightweight and dewy and i don't feel clogged up whenever i wear it um i feel like fenty beauty is like really really good for the industry in like how makeup is going to be going forward because it's showing all these other makeup brands about more more about like inclusivity and like being diverse and how they should start making their formulas especially when it comes to foundation because with some foundations for like black and brown skin like a lot of the time they only consider like surface value like what like a black or brown person how their skin tone actually is but i feel like with fenty they think about undertones like like that will suit the whole of your face whether that be your under eyes your nose like your chin like they think about undertones they think about coverage like what kind of coverage people want if they want it to be matte if they want it to be dewy do you know what i mean so i feel like they're really setting um setting like the standard of what people want makeup to be and i feel like since they've like come out with like new formulas and improved their formulas that a lot more people have like been stepping up their game and like how they like produce products how they present them and all that kind of stuff and who they include to like actually show their um their products as well because a lot of the time when it comes when it comes to like black and brown people especially dark skinned women like they won't show you like the darkest dark skinned woman and they won't ever show you like on their color spectrum what their darkest tone is like everyone's dark like dark skin tones are really different so i feel like fenty beauty is really really good for that and like I said, like, it's just a really good product to have because it never makes me feel like I'm actually wearing makeup. I just feel like, I just feel like I'm going up with my normal face whenever I do wear it. I don't ever look caked up. I don't ever look like I'm doing too much with my makeup. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can agree on that as well. So yeah, hopefully this video is good enough. Hi, my name is Shade and today I'm going to talk about my experience using Fenty Beauty products. So I should preface this to say that I'm not hugely into makeup. I, you know, just consult YouTube when I'm trying to achieve a kind of look. It's not something that I use every day. I, in general, find actually shopping for the products and figuring out what will work for my skin and what will match, of course, quite intimidating. Um, there's so many different brands, there's so many choices now and it can be super expensive because sometimes you have to do trial and error. <sighs> so, I will go through the products that I am currently using from the brand or that I've bought from the brand. Um, so, I have the full bodied foundation brush in 110, um, the Pro Filter Instant Retouch Concealer in the shade 220 and the Stunner Lip Paint Longwear 
fluid lip color in unveil both of the latter two products i'm wearing now on my face is i kid you not only the concealer and then of course the lip paint on my lips so my experience has been pretty good using these products like the brush applies the products quite seamlessly i didn't use it today um i used a beauty blender from another brand to put this on um i didn't need to use a brush but when i want to do foundation i tend to go for this brush right now over any other brushes that i have in my collection i don't really do makeup partly because of the industry i have been working in and also because i have pretty severe dermatitis on my face um it's usually here on my cheeks and of course i have some some scarring as well but my um problem areas are on my cheek area i have some patchy pigmentation as well as a dermatitis and the concealer has helped tremendously kind of even that out without having to use color correction from a different product so many of the kind of things that the concealer has ticked off for me has been the fact that it's not too fussy it's not too heavy in application it matches really well in this shade and yeah like I just have no complaints in general it doesn't dry up my skin I don't find, find that I have huge problems like the days following like with my skin reacting to it um terribly of course there will be the other products that i use alongside in terms of skincare as well but i haven't found that i have had any kind of excess reactions i think what has thrilled me about the whole fenty brand or the fenty experience has been with fenty beauty there are options and they are marketing towards women with skin tones on such a wide range that no other brand has really done before for me anyway like some of the other brands that might have done them have not been in my price range or have not been accessible to me many of my peers will remember the era of dream up moose and how for a lot of us just starting to wear makeup at the time being teenagers there wasn't a lot of money <laughs> that we had personally um that we can be spending on like more pricier products the products for me personally and what i had from some of my peers was that it was cakey it dried out their skin there were like what six to eight colors at the time like don't quote me on that but that's what i remember like there just wasn't the range it just didn't do well for my skin the impact of fancy beauty on the industry has been phenomenal um we saw many brands that didn't previously have the range or didn't care to market towards people of a wide range of skin tones and colors um scramble in the wake of fenty beauty to like catch up and to be able to cash in on that kind of zeitgeist and i don't think that many have like actually achieved that and also i think the reason why fenty has had this kind of impact has been partly a huge part to do with LVMH and then being able to kind of push the products and develop the products to a higher standard that many kind of startup brands could have realistically done like they have the means to do it and then the other part is Rihanna like she's done extremely well in terms of like music and then her forays into um, makeup and now skincare and fashion as well previously like they seem to have just kept building on each other and getting better as they've gone along and then as well for me like her being a black woman of Caribbean heritage and I'm a black woman of Caribbean heritage um I can't deny that part of my bias in supporting the brand is because of that to be honest and like I'm fully here for Rihanna's success lastly just to like touch on price points I think it's not too much more pricey than other brands in my opinion the foundation brush is 26 pounds um the concealer is 19 pounds and the lip paint is 20 pounds now i have to say for me i am a bargain hunter and the concealer and the lip paint i actually paint with them with my boots points the brush my mum actually got on the sale shelf as well so if you can get those bargains do so because if you think about it you buy like five or six of these products in one go and you can spend over a hundred pounds but i think that's a buy the buy so yeah that's what my thoughts are on the whole fenty beauty thing i hope that has been helpful um yeah thank you so much for listening to what i have to say today
So while the beauty and the fashion industry still have a very, very long way to go, um, I thought it would be a good idea to just kind of highlight the impact that Rihanna and Fenty Beauty as a brand have had on the whole cosmetic industry. And I feel like it should be highly respected and I feel like it should be used as a case study for many different brands that many different demographics have a large spending power. And if you market smart, then you'll be able to sell to a wide demographic of people and kind of meet the needs of a wide range of people. But yeah, on that note, shout out to Rihanna, just an amazing businesswoman. She's had so much impact on the industry that many people like to downplay, like I said earlier. And But what I'd like to know is what you guys think, of course, so comment down below your thoughts. Like this video, subscribe to the channel if you are new. This is the Fashion Archive. I talk about fashion. Now I'm talking about beauty for the first time, but beauty and fashion kind of correlate. Um, I'm going to Central St. Martins to study fashion journalism in October, um, which is very exciting. And like I said earlier, if you want to support the channel financially, I'll really appreciate it if you subscribe to the Patreon. Link in the description below. And on that note, I really appreciate everyone that watches these videos and I'll be back with another video really soon.